Mark Rippon, former Redskins quarterback, and uh, he is with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Mark, how are you? Wonderful, guys. How are you this morning? Doing okay. Um, you know, I don't know if you heard. I know that you, our producer was patching you through. You know, with Jay, when when I hear Jay speak, I, I feel as if there's just, you know, extra urgence, maybe even tenseness uh, that he projects. And I wonder if on occasion that can have a – uh, kind of permeate the locker room. Maybe I'm I'm reading too much into it. They didn't look like they were ready to go last night. What did you see? That was ugly. Yeah, I I, I wish Jay probably should have played yesterday. I mean, <laughs> with the way things went, I mean, it was uh, pretty disappointing to see that they held their own destiny in in the weeks to come, and and to go out and play as flat as they did, and never really uh, allow the Redskin faithful to get uh, into the game, and um, you know, got behind right from the get go, and and just uh, couldn't muster anything up. And they've struggled all year long in the red area. And it was, again, the same thing yesterday. Drop balls, uh, you know, uh, the fumble started the second half. You know, they gave them ball at the one-foot yard line. And basically was just, uh, you know, kind of their Achilles heel all day long and, and really was a, just just a flat team, you know, defensively, um, offensively, and then and special teams. Now, Mark, you, you, you were at the Redskins during the 80s and, and 90s and, that's when I was growing up. I'm from Roanoke, Virginia, so I grew up. Oh, I know, I, Tiki. Yeah, you're right here at University of Virginia. You're right, man. Uh, I grew guy, up. In a, yep. I, I grew up a huge fan of yours, huge fan of yours, and the Hogs and everything, the counter trade, all those things that you guys uh, were, <laughs> were, were were known for back in the day. And the faithful, you talk about the Redskins faithful, who were just unbelievable. The one, I only went to one game uh, when I was uh, when I was growing up, and it was a Redskins Browns game. Somehow, I had I, my aunt got tickets, and we went, and it was great. Um, I wonder, is the fan base still rabid like that? Or have they kind of, I don't know, faded off a little bit because of some of the mediocrity that has existed over the, over the last few years? Last year was great, but other than that, it's been, it's been rough. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Tiki, one, gosh, if uh, had you run in that counter tray, you would have got 20,000 yards <laughs> and, and probably still be playing. Yeah, um, well, it's Coach Pope. Coach Pope brought it with him when he came <laughs> to the Giants. <laughs> The uh, the interesting thing is you know the intimacy of RFK Stadium is uh, you know fifty six thousand rabid fans a you know twenty year waiting list to to get a ticket to a, a place that's kind of open and there's not a lot of history and uh, stadium FedEx Field and just kind of a, a, you know off the Beltway and really there's no there's no connection you know that that, that DC area and, and that uh, how they you know absorb their team and. It's also before, you know, uh, free agency. You know, we didn't have free agency till I think, 1994, 95. And, you know, we went to four Super Bowls in 11 years and won three of them. So there was a, a sense of community, a sense of being here in the off season, a sense of doing things together as, as, as players and as a community. And, um, and you don't see that anymore. It's kind of like each guy has their own business, and, and you kind of go through your, you know, you're making sure that you're taking care of yourself and, I know collectively you want to play uh, at, a, at a high level, but um, it's it's really frustrating to see a team that you know kind of has that. Uh, you, you need that edge, you know, and they don't have that edge that uh, that's going to come out and play at a at a at a level with everything on the line, with some intensity and some uh, and, and to play as flat as they did yesterday is disappointing as a, as a former player and and I think as, uh, as fans here, it's it's not acceptable to to see a team with everything on the line. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm never one of those guys that's always, you know, the Debbie Downer afterwards. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't a fun environment last night. And really, the fans were kind of sitting on their hands, and it was not, not, a, good, not a good situation. No, no, it really wasn't. Talking to Mark Rippon, former uh, Redskins quarterback. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. So, Mark, when you look at Kirk Cousins, uh, I, I know what we've seen so far. I'm curious at. Where's it, the upside? How much better can he actually get? What What is his ultimate uh, window of of, um, of of achievement, if you will? Where, where? How much better can he actually get? Well, I mean, you're, you're as good as your your pieces of the puzzle, and uh, you know his offensive line. If they if they can stay healthy and, and his receiving core and players around him and a defense that gets him the football, I think that's a, the one thing is they couldn't get off the field in the first half, you know, and. Uh, the defense couldn't get off the field in the first half, and you kind of put themselves into a position where uh, the strength of the Redskins in the, in the games that they won was, you know, the ability to run the football. And Tiki will tell you the same thing. If you've got a good running game, um, you know, that opens things up for safeties coming up in the box and throwing the ball over the top, and you got some guys that go over the top. I was a little disappointed we didn't take some more shots downfield. I don't know if they weren't they weren't there because we couldn't run the game and they're 
in that soft two deep most of the uh, you know most of the game Carolina was and they're able to control the line of scrimmage and not let us run the football but um, that's what you got to be able to do and that's still the old adage of of NFL is the toughness side of it be able to run the football and make some big plays in the passing game off the run and they just got behind and just had to throw 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 and um, you know they they had their opportunities and chances especially the late in the fourth quarter there where they dropped a couple passes and had an opportunity to get within a three-point game and so uh, they were their own Achilles heel basically and it's just it's just frustrating to see a team that you know had so much promise this year and a lot of people picked them to be in the playoffs and um, now they got to wait for others to, to falter and and don't uh, have the luxury of saying, hey, we, we could have done this ourselves. But you don't doubt that he's the long-term guy at center, do you? under center, do you? I think, you know, if, if they don't sign him to a long-term deal, they're making a mistake. He's, he's okay. got the, the, the tools. He's got the, uh, you know, the ability to, to take this team in the next four, five, six years. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that that would be the first thing I would do is, is sign him to a, a, a good deal to keep him around for four years and then build some – some pieces to uh, that puzzle. You know, I think Garcon can still play. Sean Jackson, we all know, can play. Um, Crowder can play. So they're tight ends, you know. Uh, it's, uh, w- one of the big parts of yesterday's game was, you know, the, the frustration of Reed not being able to, to to do the things that he's done in the past, probably because of injuries. And he got frustrated and swat, took a took a poke at a guy, and it was pretty much uh, covering, up like, covering him up like a blanket, you know. And that was – that was frustration, and so you lose one of your best players in a big red zone p- part of your game uh, in the third quarter because he's frustrated. So you can't have that. You know that's yeah. not uh, not acceptable. No, that was big play. It was one of the first things we mentioned this morning. Talking to Mark Griffin with us, former Redskins quarterback Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Now, Mark, I'm going to transition out of the NFL into the Lynx, which is a game that we all love but also hate. Now, my brother is a really good golfer. He's probably about a three, maybe two or three, because he lives down in Tampa. Oh, Rondé can play. He Absolutely. can play. When he, when he gets focused, when he retired, he said, yeah, I want to join one of these celebrity tours and go make some money just playing golf for a living. Now, you actually do that. <laughs> uh, the Diamond Resorts Invitational, uh, which you finished 10th in last year in 2016. This year, it's January 13th and 15th uh, down in Orlando. How hard is it to go from being an athlete I mean a football player to being a golfer and being good at it because a lot of athletes are really good at golfing well you know we need to find something after you know the lights have turned out you know something that keeps our competitive juices going and whether it's your buddies at the country club or your brothers playing a little five dollar NASA or playing for lunch or something like that it just kind of keeps your juices flowing and then to play in a tournament with with ropes and fans and the, the possibility of of uh, you know hitting somebody when, when you when you hit your tee shot you know and what I I've, I've always love playing with uh, Michael Jordan and Tahoe because what happens you get about ten thousand people following your group so they'd all kind of go around the green so you kind of almost, almost had like a backstop like a backboard you know if you did hit one a little bit thin you know unfortunately you might hit a mom or a <laughs> jeez or a, a, hey, a, but it would stop dad. it would stop <laughs> <laughs> but it would stop you know so it wouldn't go into the deep rough or the, the hazard and you'd still have a shot so um anyways it's just uh something you know and then this year the, the concept that they have i think is pretty cool they got three lpga tour gals that are playing with 27 senior tour players uh for their own purse and and also uh, 50 celebs are going to play for for our purse and also we're going to raise a ton of money for the florida hospital for children um but it's going to be a unique concept and we're going to get a play with uh two uh, or two of us or two celebs are going to play with a senior tour player or uh, one of the uh, if we're smart we like to play with one of the gals you know they're always fun <laughs> to play with and they hit it they hit it farther than we do so it's it's pretty cool to see that but um, the interesting part about this is as celebrities we want to pick their brain about golf and as golfers they want to pick our brain about sports or entertainment or music or whatever so it'll be a pretty cool little deal it'll be the 13th to 15th down in central florida you know kind of a the old uh, Osprey Ridge uh, Disney course they used to have, uh, Tranquilo has turned it into a, just an absolutely spectacular golf course. And, of course, Four Seasons does things first class. And uh, the Orlando area is missing that. They, they they need something like this. PGA Tour wanted to be in Orlando, and they wanted Diamond Resorts involved. And so, uh, you know, we, we got a little, little bit of everything there. So it should be a fun time. Yeah, I was talking to Smoltzy about this last week, and he was raving about the setup in the course. I'm curious, though, here, obviously, Mark, you – you're playing for a few bucks and you're playing at this level. You obviously have a lot in the bag. You can play. 
Uh, but when you're playing in front of people, there's oh, you're not a pro. I mean, as much as you, you kind of <laughs> are, but you're not. Uh, what is the one shot where you're like, oh, man, I just don't feel comfortable hitting this particular shot? Is there anything where you actually get a little stage fright performing in front of people? Anytime I miss the green, I got the, I use my hands a little bit too much when I chip, so yeah. I can skull it or chunk it and Ooh. with the best of them. So, yeah, um, yeah it's just uh, it's just something that, I, you know, I, I need one. That's one of the things I probably need to take a lesson is just my short game. You know, every time you, you get in front of people, you do it at your own home course, it's easy, but then you get in front of people, they're watching, and, you know, Johnny Miller might be up in the booth looking at you. It's like, oh, gosh, Ooh, uh, you know, <laughs> a little stage fright happens, and, uh, a lot of times it, it turns out okay, but not as good as uh, smooth and, and nice as uh, watching these guys who do it for a living. Understood. I know it's going to be on the Golf Channel, too, so we'll pipe in and uh, we'll check you out. Mark Rippon, Super Bowl MVP, former Redskins quarterback, and uh, hit him straight, brother. You yeah. know, no foot wedges in this outing, so make sure you, uh, <laughs> no, you know, observe the rules. <laughs> be good, Absolutely. Mark. Tiki and Tyranny, Merry Christmas. Uh, thank you, guys. And, uh <laughs> Looks like we're going to get the Giants. Uh, your, your 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 old boys might have another shot at her. I know, I know. It looks like they will, mainly because your guy kind of messed it up. My former guys. Yeah, we. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, Mark. Thanks, Good chat Mark. with Merry you. Merry Christmas right. back to you. Cheers.